We finally got hands on with Beyond the Wire, and today in this video, I want to bring you guys the things I've learned that have made me a better player in this game. Beyond the Wire is a new flavor of title and comes with entirely new rule sets. Even though it's based off the same code base as Squad and Postscriptum, fundamentally the game just operates entirely differently from these games due to the settings and due to the weapons that you have on hand. And in this video, I'm going to bring you guys everything I've learned so far that can improve your game in Beyond the Wire. One of the big differences in this game is the priority order of how you need to think. I guess in other titles such as Squad, there's a big emphasis on shooting first and moving later. Whereas I find in Beyond the Wire, movement is very much critical to any kind of success in this game, and moving quickly especially is something that's quite important, and there's two reasons for that. Movement is massively important for the fact that people tend to play this game quite slowly and tend to aim down sight and tend to sort of sit where they feel comfortable. If you're a player who's moving quickly, fundamentally you'll either dodge shots where necessary or you'll be the kind of person who gets up into the opponent's face, which gets you a chance of winning. And when you have to cross planes like No Man's Land and entire sections of the map where there's just not a lot of cover, movement is critically important and especially finding places where you can move and then move into cover and then maybe start firing back. I'd always say move first and shoot later in these scenarios, but don't forget to shoot at all. Something I'm seeing quite frequently is people just aren't willing to take the shot if they don't think that their sight is perfectly in line with the player and they don't think they're going to kill them. Well, in Beyond the Wire, there's a few chance factors such as Scope's Way, but also there is actually a suppression system in this game. If you fire at somebody, you can at least at the bare minimum put their shot off, and even if you're not completely on target, you'll rattle them and make it difficult for them to fire back. So always be willing to fire on the move, don't be the kind of person who gets too passive, and you'll definitely find some successes there. And the final point of emphasis on this is positioning. Positioning is very important in this game, and finding advantageous positions which have high ground or really strong cover I think is very important in this title. Beyond the Wire is a game that very much punishes you for being out in the open. If you're caught out in the open, there's a good chance that there are numerous bolt action rifles facing your way, and in the worst of scenarios, you'll get mown down by a machine gun. But more often than not, it's about limiting the number of sight lines into you as a player, whether that's using a doorway, whether that's using a trench line, anything of that variety really that just minimizes the amount of ways somebody can look at you is a good thing. If you can control those situations, you'll find yourself winning those situations. And there's actually some really good instances of gameplay in this video where I'm standing on a rooftop, but I know that my friendlies are surrounding me on either side for the most part of that gameplay, so I knew I was relatively safe, and I at least had a cushion so I could focus forward, and the enemies in front of me could only kill me from the front as well. Limiting that scope and scale allows me to be effective, and it also reduces me having to look around so often to see enemy threats coming at me, because the emphasis is that they're coming from one direction. So in the grand order of things, move, shoot, position. And you'll find this to be quite effective. I think a lot of people are putting too much emphasis on shooting first or getting into the right positions first. Fundamentally, this game is always in motion you know there's periods of times where enemies are going to be pushing you in numbers and you'll be pushing enemies in numbers and no real position is 100 percent safe so you just have to treat every situation as a fluid situation that could go either way and always be willing to fall back this is probably a new tip or i guess an extension of this tip but i see far too many people who aren't willing to move backwards this is a game where you're going to get surrounded eventually and because you're using a bolt action rifle or a pistol you know there's too many enemies for the number of bullets and speed of reload that you have and you'll have to fall back on your friendlies and rely on that cushion of safety because nothing else can really provide it and there's no other weapon for you to switch to another major tip that i think is very important is to utilize other classes as much as you humanly can i think fundamentally playing this game there is a limitation in using a bolt action rifle but for the vast majority of people People, that's simply the only thing they have and I find myself more often than not trying my best to get machine gun rolls or even the grenadier roll just something that allows me to diversify my gameplay a little bit rather than just being a basic rifleman now whilst you do always have the option of melee charges I always feel these are best supplemented by things like grenades or smoke grenades or some kind of artillery engagement and I find that the grenadier and assault class are really great for this because they give you the option to rush a trench line or rush a fortified position with some smoke and with some explosive firepower I think the most effective instances of gameplay I've seen is when I've been able to throw a grenade into a trench line and then rush it melee wise because the people who are there are either dead or have taken some kind of explosive damage 
damage and immediately moved into bandage. And that gives you a real window of opportunity to be very impactful very quickly in this game. Another big thing I've noticed about this game, and something that I highly recommend to people, is to be aware of your surroundings and your character model. Some of the German models will have a red hat, and all of the French models are bright blue, so in many scenarios there'll be cases where that works for and against you. For example, on the Zinnabeek or Passchendaele map, fundamentally as a German, that greyish camo really helps out. But if you are one of the players with a red hat, well, you kind of stand out like a sore thumb. And if you're a French player, you'll find that in the Freeze map, you might actually have a bit more luck because the colors and all the colorful settings around you sort of make you blend in a little bit. But as a German, as a really dark character object on these really bright, colorful and vibrant maps, you may be as a disadvantage in these scenarios and you kind of have to work with that and use your surroundings accordingly. I find that the German uniforms work very well inside because you can hide quite well and use the shadows to your advantage. And I find the French uniforms work incredibly well in bright scenarios. And I think the freeze map is a good example of that. And it's something to be aware of. A huge thing I would also say as well is to be very cautious and very pre-cautious of when you move and when you shoot. I see a lot of people rush into engagements in this game and naturally the game has a very punishing stamina system. In fact, I often don't make movements to new positions now if I know my stamina can't support that run. If I run all the way to a building, sure, that's great, but fundamentally if I can't shoot back because my stamina is so low, you'll find yourself very quickly at a disadvantage. This is something always worth considering. Will your stamina make the distance that you're looking to cover or are you going to have to do it in segments? I find that segmented runs allow you to really shoot back effectively and be accurate when you need to be. Whereas runs that aren't in that capacity and try to use the full amount of stamina, you find yourself very quickly at a disadvantage with enemies. Another thing I highly recommend is checking your rebinds. I would never recommend that anybody in this game uh, uses hold to lean. I'd always use toggle to lean. But also, I highly recommend rebinding your melee button to something more comfortable, like a mouse button. This is especially important when you get into trenches and you can fix your bayonet. Having a button that's a bit more comfortable than what is pre-required is much better in my opinion and has definitely improved my game. My final major point is to really listen out for audio in this game and use your map accordingly. A lot of people in this game tend to not use audio because there's so much going on, but it's actually very easy to do. I find when I'm often isolated in situations or if I've pushed too far forward or the trench line itself is just a little bit quiet, that little echo of audio, that tiny footstep or that one reload or the sound of a grenade pit can really make a difference in identifying where my next threat is coming from. And this is something I really highly recommend to most people is that if you find yourself in a situation where you are a little bit more alone or there is only one or two of you to try and use that map to identify where sounds are coming from. If you know you haven't got many teammates around you and you're hearing loads of footsteps, chances are they're probably not yours. My final final point is a bit of a general one, but it's something I think that's worth mentioning. Be willing to give your machine gun crews or artillery crews a slap around the head. Artillery and machine guns in this game are running a little bit out of control and I'm seeing far too many people shooting friendlies. I'm seeing far too many artillery regiments blow up entire teammate segments. I've seen an artillery shell wipe out a whole squad and it wasn't even an enemy artillery shell. And something I think that's very important in this game is either talking to your squad leader or just flat out if you are a squad leader, telling the artillery to stop being dumb as hell. Because it's really important and fundamentally having artillery that's working against you is just a flaw in this game at the moment. What I would say is that if you were finding yourself in this position, if you're finding yourself in a position with artillery really trying to hammer you down and some of it's coming from your own friendlies, tell them very simply, if that artillery shell is landing within 50 meters of you, that they shouldn't be firing it in the first place. And if they don't listen, well, either speak to server admins or uh, if the server's a little bit unruly, you might have to take it a step further. I don't advocate team killing very often, but I had an artillery segment that once faced off against me and they constantly were killing my teammates. And I simply had to because there was just no other way around it. You know, they were being so careless with where they're firing their shells that I almost had to take my own sort of impunity justice on it and take them out because they were being more of a hindrance than they were helping. So that's about it for this Beyond the Wire video today, guys. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you've enjoyed something that will help you out a little bit as well. Leave a like, leave a sub, and I'll catch you in the next one.